So today we've got a very special video for you guys. We are going to be sharing with you Baby Max's first bites of solids. Myself up, painted the scene them they got. My queen bee swinging to my son as I lay by. It's how I want it. In a minute, she rolls something that's thick. Hey, you guys, Aaron here at Eat Move Rest, and welcome back to the channel. So, today I'm going to be talking to you guys about how we started Max on solids, especially on a plant based or vegan lifestyle. A lot of people are concerned that their baby may not get enough nutrition, and that is just simply not the case. You just have to educate yourself, arm yourself with weapons of mass nutrition and just take the plunge. And don't be afraid to get messy. It is messy, but that's part of the fun and part of the experience for your baby to learn how to manage solid foods on their own. So we'll talk about baby led weaning, we'll talk about purees, smoothies, all the fun stuff. So this is just a quick disclaimer. I'm not a medical practitioner. I'm not an expert. I'm not claiming to be. This is simply me sharing me and my family's experience and sharing what has worked best for us as well as asking you guys that if you have any recommendations for us or maybe know something that we don't, please pop some comments below. Let's get a conversation started and get to know each other. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's jump right into it. So since I'm not an expert, one of the pla or two of the places that I like to go for expert information are PCRM.org. So this is the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. And these are plant-based physicians. It's completely accredited. You can trust the physicians and the experts on this website website. They have meal plans for adults. They have a plant-based nutrition quick start guide, which they also have a pediatric plant-based nutrition quick start guide. Looks like this. It's just a quick little booklet, so it's not a big chunky book to read through. This has everything about uh, infant nutrition, toddler nutrition, kiddos, you name it. It's in this. It tells you about supplements, foods, uh, nutrients of importance. So I've learned most of my information from this little compiled booklet. It's very short and sweet. And then the other site that I really love is, I also follow these guys on um, Instagram. It's called Plant Based Juniors. So I'll put the text right here so you can find them as well. They are coming out with a recipe book. I don't think it's out yet, but they do a lot of baby led weaning and they're all plant based, of course. And I printed out, they've got a nice little free PDF you can print out with, again, some of the uh, RDA for adequate intake of things like iron. Iron is super important. So since I'm not an expert and I'm only sharing our experience, these are the two recommendations I would have for you. There are tons of others out there. If you guys know of others, I've said this before, I don't like to read books. I think most of it's that I don't have time lately, hashtag busy mom. So big chunky books just aren't my jam. So Audible is great, podcasts, Instagram people to follow, any recommendations like that that are a little bit easier to absorb information in a more efficient manner, pop them in the comments below for myself and for everybody else to learn from as well. So if at any point you see me glancing down, I do have my handy dandy notes on me just so I can make sure and cover the bases. You're going to see a lot of clips from everything from when Max hit six months on this on the date we started solids with max and we definitely tried to take the baby led weaning approach but we also included other methods as well so we decided a fun route to take would be to let max be the decision maker as far as what kind of solids he wanted to start with so we let him decide between an avocado and a banana hey you guys so we just got home from our farmer's market it is sunday june 23rd which means it is officially baby max's six month half birthday so in order to celebrate, we are going to be starting solids. We're gonna do the smackdown between the avocado and the banana. <laughs> what are you thinking, bud? Is it time to eat one of those? Yeah. So he palmed the avocado. I think we're gonna start hey. here. <laughs> what is that mess? What is that? Oh my gosh. We're making guacamole. Oh boy. <laughs> oh my 
goodness. So I think this is our last avocado, which means we're gonna have to scrape this up and eat it with our dinner. <laughs> so you might be wondering, how do I know if my baby is ready for me to start introducing solids or try baby led weaning? And we have learned from other YouTubers and from reading blogs and from even healthcare professionals that six months is an appropriate age to start typically because their digestive systems are developed enough that they can actually handle other types of foods other than uh, formula or breast milk. So I would say six months is usually a good starting point. That being said, every baby is different. So you also wanna look for different cues. So one would be if your baby is able to kind of sit up on their own, if they have good head and neck control, maybe they've even popped a couple of teeth, and most importantly, they're showing and taking interest in what you are drinking and what you are eating. So Max, at about five and a half months, started to kind of reach and grab and even lip smack whenever we would be eating dinner or when I'd be drinking a smoothie. So he started to realize that Something's going in that mouth that tastes good that you guys get to enjoy and I want to try it too. So again, the whole monkey see monkey do thing is a real thing. Your baby will start to see what you're doing and start to mimic or pick up on and want to be a part of it. So those are just a few cues and tips and tricks if you're wondering if your baby's ready. I actually just discovered that somebody is teething. Let's see those teeth, baby. <gasps> Smile for us. We have teeth about to pop through. <laughs> Are you turning into a big boy? Food and bottles and teeth? So baby led weaning can be really scary and intimidating because you're giving your baby solid whole foods, usually starting with finger shape. You want them to be about the length and width of your finger so there's enough room for your baby to grasp because babies don't know how to do the pincer grasp at six months so you'll want it to be like a finger shaped food that they can easily grab and there's still enough food on top that they can gnaw on or nibble on something like <gasps> yeah something like a cucumber if it can be a coin shape that can fit inside of your fingers like this then the best thing is to not give that to your baby because that can be a choking hazard so the best thing to do is to slice them about the length of your finger so slicing it lengthwise and then quartering it so that you're not getting any of those round shapes that can get lodged in your baby's throat and completely block off their airway so this is what I was talking about with those quartered cucumbers or anything. This is a good way to slice your fruits and veggies so it's long and the baby can grab hold and still put some in their mouth and it won't get it won't completely block the airway if they do actually chew some and swallow it. You ready to give it a try, buddy? Does that thumb taste better? This is going to feel good on your teeth, I guarantee it. Oh boy. How does that taste? It's going to feel good on your gums. Yum, yum, yum. Oh, I heard a crunch. Those little baby rabbit teeth on the bottom <laughs> got it, didn't they? How's that bell pepper? <laughs> Not as sweet as some of the fruits, huh? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Oh. The reason we decided to go the baby led weaning route, well, there's a million reasons why it's amazing, but it allows your child to be kind of the decision maker and take the reins and it helps them to be less picky because it's their choice what food they're putting into their mouths and on top of that it helps with their uh, senses it helps them to feel taste texture different types of foods some are mushy some are firm all that fun stuff so it really just helps them to get a total grasp pun intended on food and meal time it also helps them to gauge for themselves when they're satiated and when they're still hungry so they can eat themselves rather than having you force feed them, spoon feed them constantly, even though they might be getting a little bit of a belly ache because they're too full. So it can help them to better learn for later years when to gauge when they're too full, when they should stop eating. So that's why we love baby led weaning for that reason too. That being said, we're not purists. We don't think that you can't do purees or you can't do smoothies because I will tell you it was a little bit scary at first. You'll want to know the, the difference between choking versus gagging because a lot of times your baby is going to appear to be choking on solid foods, but it's really just a gag. So you can find other YouTubers out there uh, or find 
um, people who are really experts on baby led weaning and they can teach you a little bit more about that. But basically a baby's tongue is where their gag reflex is. Ours is further down towards our throat, but the baby's is further up on their tongue so that if something even so much as slips towards the throat, they kind of gag. Like you can tell the difference because with choking, there's not going to be coughing because something is blocking the airway. So that's really scary. But with gagging, they kind of, you know, they're like coughing or gagging the food up and usually they're able to um, get the food out of their mouths if they have too much in there or if it's going too far back. They're pretty good about being able to get it out on their own. You just have to trust the process and know that there are a few choking hazards to steer clear of. One would be honey, another would be like really chunky nut butters or big globs of it. You can do a little bit thinly spread on toast and things like that, but steer clear of honey and thick globs of um, nut butter. Nuts on that note as well. Things like that until age four. Popcorn as well, that's also a no-go until age four. So again, you can look on other baby led weaning sites. Plant Based Juniors is great and they'll give you a little bit more uh, detailed information on that. But that's just to get the ball rolling, things to be thinking about as you're doing your research, making sure you know what are serious choking hazards. Some others would be things like apples and carrots that are uncooked. If you're gonna give them those options, cook them and or remove tough skins as well from fruits and veggies. Another thing to avoid would be added sugars, added salts. So a banana does not contain added sugar. Fruit sugar is totally fair game, totally fine. In fact, it's super nutritious for your baby. That's gonna give them energy, carbohydrates, all kinds of vitamins and minerals. So fruit is totally fine, but steer clear of added processed refined sugars, things like baked goods, cookies, cakes, with the exception of a first birthday party, of course. <laughs> Also, steer clear of added salt. So this was really difficult for Dusty and I because I like to add a little bit of salt and pepper to my meals uh, for flavor, but it actually ended up being healthy for the whole family. So we just ended up cooking without those things. And then our food, even if it was a little bland, we got used to it or we could salt our own dishes, but it's better for baby because their kidneys aren't quite developed enough to process salty foods. So. Just take it as a step towards more, towards better health, more nutritious food for the whole family, and then you can salt your own portion. That being said, that doesn't mean you can't use seasonings. Seasonings can be perfectly fine and healthy and safe for your baby. Of course, you don't wanna go piling a whole bunch of crushed red pepper or cayenne onto a dish, but things like curry powder can be fantastic flavor for your baby to experience. So it is week two of baby led weaning. Today we are trying an orange for the first time. So I think this is food number five now. So we have tried sweet potatoes, avocados, bananas, watermelon, and now an orange. We're still taking it one food at a time just to make sure he doesn't have any kind of reactions or extreme blowouts. <laughs> at this point, obviously, babies just kind of play around with their food. They're not quite sure um, even what to do with it once it's in their mouths. The sensation of a solid food and different tastes and textures, it's a lot to take in. It's a lot of sensory overload. So they're not always entirely sure about what to do with it, but the important thing is to keep trying day after day even if your baby seems like they don't like a certain food especially with vegetables and again like before your baby has all of his teeth we're just working on you know tastes and textures and sensations getting used to the idea of um, feeding themselves so you're not sitting here doing airplane all the time and just getting them used to manipulating the food in their mouths so eventually your baby will learn how to chew sometimes if you kind of show them you know, monkey see, monkey do, just like in the animal kingdom, that's how animals learn. So if you can kind of show your baby the way, a lot of times they will start to mimic you. Oh, there goes the orange. So in the video, it's hilarious because it was very early on, just slightly after six months, and I handed Max an apple that I had taken a bite out of, and then moms were like, no, don't do that, choking hazard, and he was totally fine and most babies probably will be, but it is a hazard, so I would steer clear of it. Um, another thing was giving him a whole orange. Again, like things like that might be a little bit to, to grasp, but he did okay with it. It was fun for him to experiment with, but again, just make sure to educate yourself as much as possible 
And one of the biggest rules of thumb is never leave your baby unattended while they're eating. During mealtime, just be present. But the nice thing about baby led weaning is that you can sit and have a meal with your baby. You don't have to eat your meal and then feed them or sacrifice your meal in order to spoon feed them. It's so much fun to just pull them right up to the dinner table with you and eat your meal, enjoy your meal with your spouse or significant other and just have them eating along with you. It helps them to feel more grown up. You're gonna realize really quickly as your baby starts to grow and develop, they become a lot more independent, wanting to do things their own way on their own. So it can be really empowering at a young age. Again, I'm just gonna touch really quick on the foods that we started with for Max. So we let him decide between the avocado and banana because they're both super nutritious. And then we moved on to sweet potatoes, especially at dinner time. We're always eating them anyways. So that was another thing he really loved. And then berries, raspberries are my favorite. They're also one of Max's favorites and kiwis. All of these foods are super soft and easy to mash and manipulate with the gums. And on that note, gums are extremely strong and powerful. A baby's jaw can really clamp down. If you ever have put your finger in your baby's mouth to maybe feel for teeth or anything, you'll know that. So since it was summertime when Max started solids, a couple other things that he really loved that I would recommend. We have these linked on our Amazon store. They're little mesh teethers and you put fruit, you put frozen pieces of fruit inside of it and then they can just suck on it and gnaw on it and kind of get the fruit juice and just a little bit of the fiber out of it. So he really loved those. And another thing was I got popsicle molds, they're little baby ones, and I made boobsicles. So I would pump my milk after I would breastfeed and then I would pour some in the little popsicle trays and then when it was really hot in the summertime I would pop one of those out and Max loved it. It was so much fun. It was great for teething and it was just really a great way to get him extra nutrition, extra breast milk in the heat of the summer. So I recommend you guys get some popsicle trays. You can also do like um, pureed fruit in those as well. Since we aren't baby led weaning purists, we did do a lot of uh, blended things and soups and like lentil purees. Um, because we don't feel like you shouldn't be able to spoon feed your child. In fact, I think it can be a helpful way to get in those extra important calories. So, you know, lentils, like I said, or rice and grains, things that can either crumble apart and fall really easily, or maybe a soup that doesn't really stay in the palm of their hands, can be helpful if you can spoon feed to give them all of that extra protein and that iron, which is so critical. And he drinks our same green smoothie that we drink. So I will link below this recipe. The only thing that we've changed is we leave out our protein powder because baby's little kidneys aren't quite developed enough to digest protein powders. So we leave that out and I do my own. So primary nutrients of importance would be making sure you incorporate lots of iron rich foods into your baby's meals healthy omega-3 fatty acids. The majority of their calories should be coming from fats at this age, so they're gonna eat a lot more fat than we as adults need, as well as vitamin C rich foods. So the cool thing about vitamin C rich foods is that they help to maximize the absorption of iron rich foods. So coupling things like kiwi, which is just as high, if not higher than an orange, high in vitamin C, coupling it with something that's iron rich like this amaranth porridge that I'm gonna show you guys. Not only are there healthy omega-3 fatty acids in the form of chia and flax in the smoothie, I also put some almond butter in this. It's just amaranth, which cooks up the same as quinoa, but it has double the amount of iron in it. In a quarter cup uncooked, it has 20% iron. So we've got the amaranth with almond butter and then I put some breast milk in there because it just helps to quench your baby's appetite and get them to try new foods. We're gonna give him a little bit of this porridge. This stuff is amazing. It's one of the lesser known grains. It's actually a seed though, but it is an incredible superfood for dinner or breakfast, sweet or savory. It can be totally easy to get all of the iron into your diet and your baby's diet. They just require quite a bit more and it can be difficult for them to get it. One, because it doesn't transfer very well through breast milk. And number two, because they just don't eat quite enough volume sometimes because baby's tummies are really tiny. So what's helped us is to give Max small meals frequently throughout the day because you can't cram very much in at one meal. So eventually you'll work your way up to breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and then two snacks in between. Before I go too far, I do wanna say I've gotten tons and tons of questions about Max's smoothie jars that we use. 
and we got them on Amazon. They're linked below in the description on our Amazon store and I've gotten tons of questions about how we were able to get him to learn, especially at such a young age, how to slurp or sip through a straw. And honestly, I don't know if we just got lucky or if he just picked it up really quickly, but it was kind of a monkey see, monkey do type of situation. I had my big green smoothie and I gave him the little one and I was slurping through the straw and just kind of showing him. And then I also let him try some sipped out of the jar and then I spoon fed him some. So he got a taste for the smoothie, which made him want to try extra hard to figure out how to get to it. So I think that really helped but we might have gotten lucky too, because I know it's not always that easy for everybody, but just keep trying. Oh boy. Okay. Ooh, look at that. What's in there? We have bananas, kiwis, and blueberries. And there's a little bit of pineapple too. So Max is now 11 months old. He's gonna be one year old in just a couple of weeks. I would say probably about around eight or nine months is when we started feeding him pretty much the same foods we were eating. So we do everything from smoothies to purees to sometimes spoon feeding, but we always make sure to have at least one option that he can feed himself with. Here we've got pretty much a perfect meal because he's got his baby led weaning fruits here bananas, blueberries, and kiwis. So it's important to have fruits, veggies, and all kinds of starchy carbs, grains, beans. Try and incorporate a lot of variety in your baby's meal so they can figure out what they enjoy. So we've got a green smoothie that's got greens in it, as well as banana, pineapple, mango. So it is extremely delicious. And it's got flax and chia for those healthy omega-3 fats. Start out slow, adding in one food at a time not worrying too much about breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Just introduce a new fruit or vegetable, for example, every couple of days to make sure your baby doesn't have any sensitivities or food allergies. And then you'll slowly kind of naturally get the hang of things and just kind of evolve your way into a breakfast, lunch, and dinner routine that works for you. And then when you get to approaching I would say 10, 11, 12 months, then breakfast, lunch, and dinner, trying to incorporate two snacks in between during the day. So that's kind of where we're at now. Max is still breastfeeding. So I always try to offer the breast before any meal, shortly before eating, just so that he can get the, as much nutrition as possible. Because again, breast milk is gonna be like basically that multivitamin for your baby. Your baby does get a lot of B12 from your breast milk. And I know that there's vitamin D in there. Like I said, there's not very much iron that transfers through. So even though your baby is getting some of these nutrients from your breasts, as you get to approaching year one, you'll want to start looking into vitamins and supplements. So they don't necessarily need a multivitamin, but if you choose to go that route, that's probably okay. But I would just really focus on B12 and D3 and making sure that you give your baby the adequate amount, not too much. They're not going to probably take the same dosage that you are as an adult. So I would do your research on that. But that is right where we are on the cusp of exploring right now is finding the best vitamins and supplements for Max. So we're for sure going to do B12 and D3 simply because we don't get that much sunlight, especially here in the dark winter days of Nebraska. And B12 is just super, super important, whether you're vegan, vegetarian, or a uh, meat eater. So look into those, as well as omega-3s can be helpful. So I wouldn't go too far overboard, but those are some nutrients that are of importance as far as supplementing goes. We already covered iron. I would really focus on omega-3 fatty acids, so putting things like chia seeds and flax seeds, those being the highest sources that I'm aware of as far as um, healthy fats go, putting those into smoothies, blending them and putting them into all kinds of baked goods. I have a really delicious muffin recipe that's actually on my blog that Max really loves. I really love, they're also fantastic for lactation if you're trying to boost your milk supply. So that can be a great way to incorporate those healthy fats as well as nut butters. I love to take almond butter and mix it into Max's porridges as well as you can put it in smoothies or like I said, spread a thin amount on a piece of whole grain bread. This is the plate that we most commonly use. I got this awesome thing and the other one both on Amazon. I can link those, they're on our Amazon store. This one's great because you can portion out and divide up different food groups. It helps you to make a complete meal for your baby and for your baby to be able to distinguish the differences in textures and tastes. 
So we really love that and it suctions down so they can't pull it off. Now bibs, this bucket bib is my favorite because it catches all of the foods and then sometimes he'll grab what he drops out of the bib. So it minimizes food waste, which is awesome. And then this one is probably the most foolproof. This is a full blown like apron bib and you can rinse it in the sink. It's pretty awesome. I can link it below if you guys are interested. But I just feel so bad because it's so crunchy and crinkly. So usually we save this one for dinner time. And this is the cup that I recommend. It's a sippy cup. But from what I've read, you're not supposed to use a traditional sippy cup with a little spout that they drink out of because it's not the best for their development. So this one is just like a regular cup, but it has this flap here to protect all of the water from spilling out at once. So they tip it back just like a normal cup and just a little bit of water comes out right there. So this thing is cool, except another question I have for you guys is how do you get your baby to drink enough water? He drinks a lot of breast milk still, so I am still um, breastfeeding a lot and I try to offer the breast before any meal of solids. It's always a rule of thumb just to make sure my milk supply stays up and to make sure he's getting all the nutrition that he needs because it's still primarily coming from these puppies. Okay. You want to say bye? Yeah. And bye -bye. I hope you enjoy this video. There's lots of fun sentimental footage in it. Dusty and I just love watching our videos back now since Max has come into the world. So hopefully you guys are finding the same. Let me know what your experience has been with baby led weaning and introducing solids. And if you have helpful resources for me and for other moms out there, other parents out there, pop them in the comments below. We'd love to have you join us here. So hit that subscribe button and join the Eat, Move, Rest fam and click that bell to turn on your notifications. Leave me some love. I love you guys. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and share it with someone who might find it interesting. Until next time, Max says eat poop rest your best. Bye guys. Yeah. <laughs> Get it in there. Good. Oh. Silly goose. <laughs> <laughs> special adorable little avocado plate for Maxi. Mm. <laughs> How is it, buddy? Do you love it? <laughs> we're Dusty, Aaron, Max, and Bo, and we're the Stanzics. We aspire to live a plant-centric, faith-forward, healthy lifestyle and welcome all of the adventures that accompany it. Join us every week as we blend, chop, juice, run, lift, ride, and master our minds in between on the ultimate quest to find better balance, deeper connection, and true happiness within.